the glory. Glad you all made it here this morning. We're maybe light on people this morning, but we're big on God. And uh, get ready because you ain't going to have as much room at the next place. You may not even get your favorite seat. You can be like God. You can have a new favorite every moment. I'm his favorite in case you didn't know. But so are you. You're God's favorite. He loved you so much that he laid down his life for you. He did it so that you can be free. Have a life full of glory. Be able to overcome the enemy. Amen. Amen. How many has overcome the enemy? Amen. Amen. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. testimony. Amen. You know what happens the first person hears your testimony when you give it? You do. And it starts encouraging you. It starts lifting you up. Amen. Amen. Uh, so uh, the title of today's message message. Yeah, it must be something up here. <laughs> it's the sound of victory. All right. And uh, we're going to come out of Joshua this morning. I don't know how long I'm going to stay on this school. We're going to come out of Joshua when the children of Israel were marching around Jericho. And when they were marching around, did they know what was going to happen? No. So, how many believe they were doing a faith walk? Mm -hmm. I've told on some of this a little bit before, some of you may remember. But they were doing a faith walk around Jericho. They had no idea. Do you know how many people were heckling them? Laughing at them? I mean, the people inside didn't even think they were enough of a threat to defend themselves. They were just up on their walls laughing at them. I mean, they, they could have been, think about it, they were, what, seven days? They could have been dropping big stones on them. They could have been shooting arrows at them. Of course, you say, well, God protected them. Yes, he did. But, you know, a lot of times people uh, might judge you or judge uh, things in your life or the enemy tries to present things. That seems like, oh, it's overwhelming. Well, it was all overwhelming to them, but they still did it in faith. And sometimes most people say, what are you doing all that for? That's pointless. Come on. If you listen to what the enemy has to say inside your head every day, or what everybody else in the world and in the, in the climate we live in, you will never have a victory shot. Victory doesn't, a victory shot doesn't happen after the fact. It happens before the fact. Some of you are already starting to get it this morning. The more the victory shot doesn't happen after the fact, it happens before the fact. But so many times we wait to get happy after. And I'm going to tell you a secret this morning. If you keep waiting to just get happy and rejoice after, you're never going to be happy this side of heaven. Because victories only come when you learn to stand in faith and shout when he says shout, move when he says move, and you may have a whole bunch of people up here laughing, jeering at you, telling you that is ridiculous. What are you doing? You need to do something else. We all know a lot of things that I've went through the last years. Of course, I've heard some of y'all tell my story. I'm like, they didn't pay much attention. They left out a whole bunch. But, you know, if I'd listened to what they said, I wouldn't be here today. But if I'd have waited for the victory, I'd have still be waiting. Mm -hmm. Some of you this morning have some places in your life you need some breakthrough. And you know, there's a difference between I hope something happens kind of shout or when you know something's going to happen kind of shout. Amen. And the Bible says, say unto your mountains, uh, over in Mark chapter 11, verses 22 down through 24, so say in your mountains. I mean, no, 
I believe he's asking, when, when you say to something, there's a difference between if I'm uh, begging you to move or I'm telling you to move. Right. Would you please step? Oh, they won't move. Oh, okay. I tried. <laughs> No, man, if I'm saying to my mountain, I'm speaking, the Bible says speak as one with, he said, they recognize each time Jesus spoke, each time the disciples spoke, they said, these speak as ones with authority. When someone with authority speaks, go on, at Matthew 28, Mark 16, he said, he let captivity, kept give gifts unto man, he said, he gave us this authority on earth, come on, we're to be his ambassador, his hands and feet, he said, these works I've done, even greater works you're going to do, come on. So, the enemy does not want you to speak as one with authority. And the first place he'll start is inside your own soul. He'll start getting you to undermine yourself and who you are, who you think you are, and what you can do. And he just wait. And you may not voice it outside, but what you what you don't know is happening, it's starting to timid your voice. And before long. You're so far from a shout, you don't even want to talk about it. You're into, I'm in ignore mode. We're just going to wait and see what God happens. I know nobody in here has ever done that. But what if I told you that that very, so, now listen, it, this doesn't always happen right away. There was many times during my thing that I gave a victory shout with faith, believing something to happen, and it sitting and looked at me. Sometimes I felt like it laughed at me. But do you know what? At the appointed time, and I'm still recovering at the appointed time. See, the children of Israel, they waited for the appointed time. Who knows? We, they didn't record it, but there could have been somebody shouting before the appointed time. But the, what they recorded was the appointed time. When God said, let it shout. They didn't know what was going to happen. Man, we, we got the, at least we got the Bible. Now we go, well, they shouted, I'll shout. It worked for them, it might work for me. No, you need to know the word and know what works. Speak faith to it. Speak the word of God over it. Come on. Amen. And then when you let out a shout, Woo! Glory! Thank you, Jesus! I hear everybody do it after they got something. I'm here to tell you, and then the season we're coming into, you're going to have to start learning to do it beforehand. Amen. Amen. You know, I used to say, thank him on credit, he's good for it. Come on. How about you go ahead and shout because you know it's coming. You see, do you know what happens when you shout? There's actually all kinds of physical things that happen. There's all kinds of endorphins and all kinds of things that start kicking into your body. Who made your body? God. God. And there's a whole lot more that happens spiritually, but all of a sudden you start feeling good. I mean, that's what even makes some people... Uh, Cheer for the bears, you know, they feel good when they get down. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but you know, at the appointed time, they let out a shout. But today, we've gotten so used the waiting for the victory before we shout. I want to encourage you to switch your mindset this morning. Someone said, mindset, is even that new age stuff? Absolutely not. Philippians 4, he says, think on these things. Things are lovely, things are pure, things are just. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. There's a war over your mind, what you think on. There's a war over your heart, what you think of. And whenever you, the enemy's trying to wear you out, there's a war over that. But you know what? The, the Apostle Paul, when he was in, in, in prison, I've talked on this a little bit here lately, just come with me. He, he didn't wait until he got released to shout. Matter of fact, when he was praising God, he didn't even know he was going to get out of jail. He'd been beaten, he'd been thrown in there, but he praised him anyways. Because whenever the enemy comes in and starts timidating your voice, whether you know it or not, you don't praise the same. See, there's different types of praise. I'm not going to teach on that. You go back to the Hebrew. There's all kinds, but there's one I really like. It's called Shabbat. You know, I like it because it's the rock and roll kind. It's the kind of man you're just really getting with it. Y'all still with me? Yep. 
That is the kind of praise God wants from us. But you'll never give that kind of praise from a defeated, defeated mindset. Somebody said he said mindset. The Bible says you have the mind of Christ. Amen. There is a battle for your mind. That's the fiery darts of the enemy. I preached it tongues around here. Amen. But it's good to shout on Sunday, but it's even better to shout on Monday. Shout on Thursday. Shout on Friday. You know, there's something happens when you activate that victory shout. Now listen, I'm not telling you to go around and act all crazy and just go, what? And somebody said, what's wrong with you? I'm shouting for my victory. Because I don't want to strangle them. No, that's no, not what he said. Come on. The Bible says if we don't praise God, even the rocks are going to cry out. I'm afraid we're to a place in our, at the end of these end times, that we're getting pretty close to that. We have worship services. They sing all kinds of good songs. There's tons of anointed, but most people are not there to praise God. They're there to make themselves feel good. Now, worshiping God, does it fill your spirit? Around? Does it feel good? Absolutely. But that's not the point of praise. Paul praised and has had his hardest times. There wasn't no lights. There wasn't no fog. There wasn't no camera. There wasn't no sound system. There wasn't nobody encouraging him. He, had, he didn't have a preacher coming. He didn't have somebody laying hands on him. He was in the middle of a nasty pit. Broken, beaten, and should have been downtrodden. But you know what he had in him? Same thing you've got in you, the Holy Ghost, the hope of glory. The Bible says he puts this treasure in earthen vessels. That's me and you. He called it a treasure in you. That's meant to be a gift to the whole world. But then he wants to convince you that you ain't nothing but a bag of bones that ain't worth nothing. That's a lie from the pits of hell. But when you start realizing there's a treasure in you, that you're worth more than rubies, all of a sudden see that shout starts to come up. Glory. Greater is he that's in me than he that's within the world. Amen. Come on, you start to look. But you know what? God said, He's worthy to be praised. When was the last time you just let loose and let it rip, just worship him till tears start flowing down your face? People will get hoarse at a baseball game or a concert, but they oh, I don't want to get loud praising God. I like my quiet time. Quiet time is good. But when I get really excited about something, I don't know about you, but I don't stay quiet. When something really trips my trigger and it really gets it, I don't, I'm not a quiet person. Matter of fact, I've never met anybody that's quiet when they finally get that thing that's really just... Now, they may not be going, woo, and waving their flag, but they may have a smile from their head and they go, yeah. But they do something that's out of character for them. Come on, are you hearing? If you want to have that voice of victory, you need to kind of get out of character for yourself and praise him in a way that almost makes you feel uncomfortable. But I'm not talking about this worked up kind of, well, Pastor said I got to do it. I want to go do it. I'm talking about just let that, get instead of concentrating on all the junk, get in touch with all the goodness of God. He loved me when I was a sinner. He loved me at my worst. He restored me. He's blessed me. He's always provided for me. Even when I don't see a way out, he makes a way out. Amen. He's my God. He is my source. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's, he is the one that always causes me to triumph through Christ Jesus. Oh, glory. We praise you this morning, Jesus. See, when something starts happening in the atmosphere, when you do that, victory starts to be released. Do you know what? There's people in your life that need victory. But until you get a shout, they're going to still be in doubt. <laughs> until you get a shout, they're still going to be in doubt. Come on. Because <laughs> whenever you get crazy enough to let it loose, they recognize, something's different here. That is not their character. I think they're really excited about this. And do you know, I preached a message years ago. Anybody remember when I preached on the war cry? 
three or four of them. I won't pre preach it with that. The sound of victory, you start letting your war cry real. Now, I'm not talking about getting it. People like to get in this warfare with the enemy. How many know we're seated in heavenly places with God? Cause us to always triumph. Come on. I, I come from a place of triumph. But that doesn't take me out of the battles, but it sure takes me out of the muck in the mind. Come on. When you're seated in heavenly places, do you ever see the old movies when they would get ready to go into battle where they had the swords as a shield? The ones that really knew who they were, they'd start rattling. They start rattling them shields, they'd rattle them swords against them. They start making some noise. And you know what they started doing? They started letting out a war cry. Why? Because it intimidated the enemy. And I want to tell you, your war cry still intimidates the enemy. When you start recognizing who you are in Christ and you start letting it go and you go, Jesus! All of a sudden, this thing shifts. Right here, some of you got some shift. Now, you can choose to activate your own war cry or you can leave the same way you came in. But something shifted right then. And I'm not preaching a complex message this morning. But it is something he told me everybody here needs to hear. We need to shift to that voice of victory. Is it going to come easy? Absolutely not. Sorry. Is it going to be worth it? More than you can even put a price on. Will it be natural to you? Probably not at first. Because you've been, we've, we've been in, we're into a society that so much we talk about. And the first thing anybody talks about is what is wrong. You ask somebody how they're doing. They want to tell you what's wrong. No, listen, I'm not knocking if you need to talk to me as pastor. That's what I'm here for. I'm just telling you, the society we live in, it, 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 the enemy has stacked it against you. And if you go into that culture, you're going to, you're going to have a really hard time keeping your work. Yeah. Come on, are you with me? Everybody around you, how you doing? How's your day? It'd be better if it wasn't raining. How's your day? Well, it's raining. I couldn't go outside and work. I don't know. How's your day? Well... I need it to rain. My crops need some more. <laughs> That's not even a stretch, is it? Nope. <clears throat> when they were marching around, they couldn't see anything yet. When the disciples went out, they couldn't see anything yet. Amen? But they acted in Faith. See, God didn't come to take you out of the problems, but He came to take you through them. And the enemy came if He's like, okay, they're going through it, but I'm at least going to have them stay miserable so they don't get to their victory. And God didn't call you to go through it miserable. I've, I've preached on it tons of times. He just came to prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies, lead you through the valley of the shadow of death. You fear no evil. My God is with you. Come on, are, are you hearing this? Why? Because he put this treasure in earthen vessels. And when you start to really, you know, this morning, I'm going to put a, if, if, Lord willing, I, I, I'm going to deposit some of that that he's put in me. How I many you know there's some things that can be taught and there's something, you know, some things are taught and other things have to be taught. Right. I'll tell you a secret that I know and I don't say things like this. I know that I'm an absolute wild man in the spirit realm. I'm just going to be honest. I don't mean that arrogantly. And I know I've got a crazy war pattern. But it's hard. And what I'm going to do this morning, if that's an area where the enemy's been beating the tar out of you in, then you came to the right place. Because I'm going to lay hands on you. And I'm going to depart. And somebody says, well, I need some scripture. Paul said, I desire that I come unto you, that I may depart some spiritual gifts unto you. You know, you can deposit faith. Come on, I'm not trying to make it weird. This is the word of God. But there's also that voice of victory. That despite all the hells came, you still believe that God is who he says he is. He can do what he said he could do. And I'm going to live and not die to bear the works of the Lord. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you that that was not easy for me to contend every day, to be honest with you, what I had to contend with. And my voice had to lift. You know what? My tongue controls my body. Amen. Amen. 
and all those things knew my voice and they they did they, they they didn't respond to my i wish my wishes they didn't respond to even somebody else but when all of a sudden they didn't respond to me to to me just talking to them they responded to a voice of faith one that spoke with authority I said that's enough i command this body to come in alignment with the word of god I said, how many times did you do that, preacher? I don't know, too many to count. But you know what I believe happened every day? There was something happening in my body, and every day there was an enemy trying to stop it. But every day that my voice of victory rose up, every day was another inch closer. Amen. And so, church, I want Broken Change Church. We're, we're coming to a whole new phase. It's going to be phenomenal. I, I know... In the natural, I think this is the lightest we've been in 10 years, a decade. I don't know where everybody is, but I know who's coming. It is not just for the church that you need that victory war cry. In these last days, he said the word of God is nigh, not even unto my mouth. If the Bible is not coming out of your mouth, then do yourself a favor. Stop and start putting in more in. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you find yourself doing stupid things, start check what your diet is. Maybe you need to turn the TV. Listen, I'm not against TV. Maybe you need to turn the TV off. Maybe you need to turn the Bible on. Maybe you need to put some worship music on. Maybe, not maybe, you need, if, if it's cutting out, the right stuff ain't coming out, then you need to change the diet you're eating on. Amen. I'm not telling you, you gotta be some religious hermit. Shut up in your house. Come on. But if you'll do that, the, that victory shot starts to come out. And it'll even remove all doubt inside you. And at the appointed time, you'll see walls fall. Yeah. Not could be, not should be. And you'll have hecklers. You'll have people making fun of you. Do you really believe God's going to do that? Haven't you been standing in faith for that for a long time? Well, he said it, he'll do it. Right. Now, I will tell you, you need to make sure that he said it. But a few times in my life with other people, people told me God said something. I went to him, he said, I didn't say none of that. Now you know it's in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. So, if I ask you today to let your war cry rip, how many of you would give me a timid voice? If you're being honest, is he really going to make us do that? <laughs> oh, I'll try a little. I really think this is stupid, though. <laughs> Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When you really start to believe it, your war cry starts to come out. I, I can talk about me. I, I, the Holy Spirit just reminded me one time before this last onslaught, I was pushing. I was in shape and I was pushing uh, with my back and things. And, uh, nobody would guess that I'm kind of a private individual sometimes, would you? But even my bride, uh, I was doing warfare, and I was just to get back to the house. I was having to pray and declare and speak things and something I'd done a thousand times, but I hadn't realized it until she said something that I had never done in front of her. And she talked to me, and she said, "I've never heard her sing that line." And she watched my body respond to that. And uh, but sometimes we need to let other people see and hear. Not in vain, not for our glory, but we need to we need to make sure the enemy knows. You know, we're not a defeated foe. We're not paupers. We're not a poor, penniless people. And you know, if he said it, he'll do it. But you know what? We don't just praise him for what he gives us. He already did enough on the cross that he could never do another thing. 
He's worthy of our every ounce of our praise until the day when he comes back. And every breath that's in me, I'm going to praise him until he takes me home. Every breath that's in me, I'm going to declare that Jesus is good. And every step that I take is going to be kingdom ground for his glory. And when I get to a place, you know, I found that usually my war cry comes whenever it's the most uh, uncertainty of places. I believe Jericho was one of those uncertainty places. How many you know if it's if it's if you can do it and it's possible, that's probably not God. When it's above you, out of your realm of things, you know only God can do. To be honest, with all this building stuff, I, I just told you from the get go. I, I've called, got wisdom from everybody, I've done those things the Holy Ghost has led us. And I said, Lord, I'm out of my element. I'm over my head, let's be honest, and I don't want to make a mess. And I, I really am a pastor. I love my people, and I want to make sure we're doing everything the right way for them, you know. He's been good, but you know, there's been a few times through here that I've already kind of had to let my war cry rip. Wednesday night, believe it or not, we were marking our territory. Amen. We were letting the enemy know that it's not the same around here. Amen. Amen. And it already feels like home over there. But some of you this morning, you need a little pep in your step. You need a little war in your pride. Amen. 